Shazam. Boom! secret, undisclosed location, somewhere in the bowels of downtown St. John's, Newfoundland, snowbound as it is, comes in the Library of Graphic Literature with your host, me. <gasps> yes? Okay. Yes. Me, Wallace Ryan. Okay. Um, it's a little bit early this week because, of course, last week we didn't get our... Uh, our uh, books because of the snowstorm and state of emergency here, but uh, they came in on Monday and uh, and I figured a uh, beautiful afternoon, why not? And also not, not only I bought some cool books and you know I figured I'm going to be doing another show this weekend anyway, so why not go for it? Okay, let's get down and dirty. Whee! Whee! Of course first off, uh, and one of the best ones, uh, it's, it's Macaulay Culkin Great from Two Morrows, those fabulous people who bring us the Jack Kirby Collector and, and back issue and other cool magazine, comic book magazines and such, comes Jack Kirby's Dingbat Love, Dingbat Love, Love, and this collects basically true life, divorce, soul love, and the Dingbats of Danger Street. Of course, Dingbats of Danger Street, there was only one issue that published in the uh, first issue special series, and so these were are the remaining ones. Of course, So Love and True Life uh, Divorce Stories, they come from the famous Speak Out series uh, that Kirby did, which unfortunately was hobbled by DC and a lot of stupid, stupid people. Uh, they did get two out anyway, and it was uh, uh, in the days of the mob, and Spirit World, which were pretty good. I, I liked them actually, the, especially the, in the days of my good old gang, gangster uh, things. But he had other projects that he wanted to do in the Speak Up series, and that included Soul Love, which is ironic considering that at the time, I guess he was what, in his 50s or 60s, 50s, I guess, doing 50. He even said something about a 50 year old Jewish man writing comics about African Americans. But he tried his best, you know, let's <laughs> give him that much. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it could be worse, too, right? Uh, and, of course, true life divorce stories. Very radical uh, for early 70s, too, because the with the no-fault divorce and all that at the time, divorces were skyrocketing in the States in the 70s. Uh, my parents got divorced in the 70s. Uh, a lot of my friends' parents got divorced in the 70s. So divorce... Was all the rage in the seventies? It was. It was the. It was the. Uh, it was the big. Uh, it was the. Uh, it was a big fad at the time, and so. Uh, anyway, back to this. So uh, the boys at Two Morrows uh, got together and dug up artwork, pencils, photocopies, and basically have reproduced as close as we could get to what these magazines would have been like way back then. What I like too is that they did a uh, a recreation of the Soul Love cover, which was kind of cool, by Alex Ross too, based on the Jack Kirby thing. But yeah, it was a. Uh, these are all the stories there, including this one which I'd seen before, and then into the Dingbats. I kind of like the Dingbats. I I, I like the. Uh, Especially this, this, this was really, I mean, action-oriented, right? I mean, Kirby was the king of action. Love this panel, by the way. I mean, the guy, the guy was years ahead of his time. And of course, they got these really cool fold-outs too, with some of the original art on them. 
I mean, look at these characters. I mean, come on. Who comes up with characters like that these days? <laughs> Birdly Mod. I mean, come on. The guy had an imagination we could only, the best of us can only wish for. So anyway, I can't say enough about uh, Dingbat Love. Mm -hmm. I, my favorite book so far. Mm -hmm. I'd lick it if I didn't, you know, if I knew it wasn't going to damage the book. But definitely a, a very kissable book. Mm -hmm. uh, good old Dingbat Love. Okay, let's move on here. So, uh, right off the bat, speaking of an, another book that I've been really looking forward to, and from a series that I collected and loved at the time. Of course, as some of you may know, I am a huge Batman fan, of course. Batman, I am Batman. Batman, no, 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 Batman. So, um... Sippy, sippy, sippy. From DC this week comes the Batman Black and White Omnibus. Okay, calm down. Don't flip out. Yes, it is it. I mean, this, this, the, the people who, who, who draw on this, it's, it's, I mean, the amount of stories and just the people who, who contribute to this. It's like a who's who of, uh, of the comic book world, especially back in the, in the early, jeez, uh, when was it? 2000, 96 to 97. I mean, everyone from, let's see here, Ted McKeever, Bruce Tim, Joe Kubert, uh, Howard Chaikin, Jose Munoz, including Archie Goodwin, uh, Walt Simonson, ja Jan Strad, and Rich Corbin, of course, Kent Williams, Jorge Zafino, Neil Gaiman, and Bisley. Klaus Jansen, uh, Libertore, Matt Wagner, Bill Sinkevich, Teddy Christensen, and Dennis, uh, Denny O'Neill, Brian Boland, Jan Stratton, Kevin Nolan, Archie Goodwin, Gary Gianni, oh, Brian Stillfries, Joe Duffy, oh, and, and Otomo One, uh, uh, Alex Ross. My buddy Ty Templeton, Steve Rude, Tim Sale. I mean, it just goes on and on. There's, I could read through all of these, but I mean, there's, there's just everyone seems to be here. John Bolton, uh, Chris Bachelot, Dennis Cowan, De Gordana. I mean, who isn't here? Z Mobius is here. Alan Davis, uh, Jason Pearson, Dan DiCarlo. I mean, my God. The, play, the book is just jam-packed, jam-packed with batty goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh. Oh, check out the, of course, there's the, there's the dust jacket. Very nicely done. Cover by Jim Lee, of course. And on the back here is, uh, runs down some of the, some of the other people. Oh, Paul Pope, I forgot about him. And Mike Mignola, Frank Miller, of course. Eduardo Rizzo, uh, Daryl Cook, of course. Mike Allred, Dave Gibbons. I mean, there's, it's like everyone in the comic book world came out for this one. So it's, it's definitely is, is, is a who's who uh, for uh, of, of, of the comic book world from the late 90s into the early 2000s. Some nice drawing. Uh, Barry Windsor Smith drawing the Batman there. Absolute. Oh, oh God. Mm, oh, oh, beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Check this out now. Let's have a quick zzz. There's the Teddy Christians in one, the Brian Boland. Uh, looks like the Gianni. Looks like the Frank Miller there. So yeah, just and the great thing is they're all just great little short stories too, which is cool. So you get a little bit you get a little taste for uh, Batman would have been like done at the hands of some of Comicdom's greatest artists. Absolutely stunning. I mean, look at this. It's so beautiful, just makes you want to lick every page. <laughs> but yeah, stunning, stunning. No. And then a lot of covers back here, including this one in there by 
and then some. So, Batman black and white on the bus. This, this is a must have. This you got to have. You must, you must. To uh, quote uh, Jack Kirby, don't ask, just buy it. So get out there and buy, buy, buy this one. This one. It, and ending back love. Get out there and buy that one too. So support uh, the boys, uh, the folks at uh, Two Morals. They deserve it. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, yeah, and from Marvel. Let's pop this baby open. Is you know, this one's a, a little bit behind, but I saved it for this week. Sometimes I will, and I think I'm going to do that more because I wanted to get in more things. Like I wanted to, to do a, a section uh, of each show from now on talking about you know different artists that are like maybe not uh, big name artists or stuff like that. But get away, get away. But you know, just just just, just great artists. Uh, now this, of course, is the uh, Incredible Hulk, the Peter David. Omnibus. Doom, 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 doom. So, all oh, the great Peter David actually did do a very good Hulk, uh, and uh, the, these I was reading at the time uh, for several reasons. I mean, I love I love the Hulk anyway, but uh, at the time I actually started reading this. Uh, really became a fan of, of his. Uh, because of, of all people, Todd McFarlane, he, when he drew, I, I liked McFarlane's Hulk. I mean, the scripts were great, the stories were great, and McFarlane, this really was what brought him to a lot of people's attention. Uh, we also get uh, some work here from uh, Dale Keown, another one of the great uh, Hulk artists, and Sam Keith with Eric Larson and Herb Tripp. And then just all kinds of other people thrown in there too, for good measure. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, uh, I loved like I say, loved the 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 McFarlane Hulk issues here. He just, he just did a great Hulk. There was something about it, I don't know. Loved loved his Hulk, and I collected every issue, and I even collected when it went when he started doing stuff for Spider Man. I started collecting those. Oh yeah, look at that. Love that 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 particular scene right there. But yeah, yeah, some great, just great artwork all, all the way through. Definitely worth, uh, definitely worth checking out. Yep. Jeff Purvis, yep, but uh, definitely. <coughs> oh. And this is the, uh, this is the Grey, yeah, this is mostly the Grey Hulk. And I, I kind of like the Grey Hulk. Let's have a look at the inside front cover. Ooh, fancy. Now, some people don't like the recolored cover to it, but eh, it's not that bad. You know, I've, I've seen far, far, far worse. Okay. So, run out and grab yourself uh, uh, that, that issue there. Um, that book there. Whew. Lifted all those heavy books, got me a bit tired there. <laughs> now, once again, I complete a series. And once again, it's the Library of American Comics. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So with this book, I do the dub. Boom, complete. Uh, and this is Bernie Google. And I've had a look at, at this, and it's, it's a really wacky, wacky. I'm a big fan of comic strips, always was. Mainly because when I first started doing com comics uh, as a kid, uh, the only uh, avenue for our creations we had were like our school newspaper, so we had to do them in comic strip form. And uh, I got into other uh, comic strips. I mean, I was also a huge fan of, of Peanuts as a kid. And. Uh, and Lil Nemo, and you know, a lot of and Pogo, a lot of classic strips, Dick Tracy, and uh, so as I got older, I got more and more into them, and I got more and more too into the 
a lot of the more obscure ones and stuff like that because I mean there was a lot of great art out there I mean back then too uh, comic books were were the sort of dirty younger brother of, of comic strips comic strips was what people wanted to be back then in, in the 30s and 40s everyone wanted to have their own comic strip they they really you know to them they were they had it made and and, and justifiably so because there were a lot of people who did comic strips who ended up to be stinking rich and so uh, it attracted you know a lot of, it was a lot and, and there was a lot of stiff competition uh, so the art had to be good uh, or inventive the stories had to be interesting and uh, so it was, it, was, it was tough going but meanwhile of course comic books just starting out you know you really could use anyone <laughs> Now, of course, the standards have flipped because now the standards for graphic literature in terms of comic books is much higher than comic strips because comic strips have, they haven't died because there's, I mean, the, the, the internet and, and computers keeps the format alive. Anyway, now I'm going to do a, uh, a little uh, journey, journey into the past. Do, 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 do. With my time machine. <laughs> now, um, actually, uh, today I'm gonna uh, focus like a laser on uh, one of my favorite artists. I, and like I said before, I, I'm gonna at the end of most of my shows now. I think I'm gonna end off with a quick chat about one of my favorite artists, whoever it is. So they'll be different every every week, if I have time. And I do have time. I still have a few minutes left. Uh, and this this uh, week, of course, I picked. Joe Sacco. Joe Sacco was, was revolutionary because he really, in my mind, really revolutionized comics in terms of the uh, uh, comics in the uh, as journalism. His books, he's, he, he goes out and he lives, he breathes, he works in the communities, in the towns, in the situations that he talks about and love his books love his books he did the uh, the great war which was one big long drawing that actually tells the story without any words and it's a uh, it's a comic about the uh, the battle of the Somme which ironically enough my uh, grandfather fought it <laughs> uh, but the picture of that one I just showed you a story from Sarajevo that's the one from this one being from this was after Safe Area Garage, I do believe. Uh, 2003. Sweet. Now, that of course, that's based, it says a story from Sarajevo. And that, I think this one was, was before that. 2003. 2000. Okay. So, uh, leading into that, uh, was uh, his book called Safe Area Garajda, The War in Eastern Bosnia, 92 to 95. It's uh, a, an amazing work of comics journalism. To me, to me, Sacco really pioneered the field, practically uh, single-handed. Uh, now, I myself, I've done uh, comics in journalistic form myself for local papers and magazines, so that's why I really like his stuff. Uh, this book in particular, Safe Area Garage, uh, this is one intense book. I tell people that reading this, it's, uh, it's, it's his, his, and he's in uh, eastern Bosnia, wait, waiting it out in a town, garage to just see if it'll be declared a safe haven. And it's just absolutely uh, stunning. Some of the things in this are mind-wrenching and very, very, very sad. But very well well told. This is what I like about uh, about Sacco too. He tells them from his point of view, uh, and, and as factual as 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 it comes. Uh, so if you want to learn anything like about say the war in Bosnia, for for instance, these are the, the those are two books uh, to read for sure. And last but not least is. Masterpiece. This is a uh, this one. He won, I think, the American Book Prize. He won uh, 
had this for. This is the 93. Uh, this is a special edition of it. <laughs> this is Palestine. Uh, and this is this is the 15th uh, anniversary edition. I actually have a 25th anniversary edition too. Uh, but Palestine is, uh, or no, no, this, this is the special edition. I also have a special edition of Safe Area Garage, so that's what I was thinking. Uh, I mean, there are other books by his footnotes in guys and stuff like that. <clears throat> but Palestine is, is, uh, is a book worth reading. If you really want to understand the situation in, in Palestine, uh, this is, this is a book to read. He, it's, it's the fairest, it's the most, it's one of the most honest and, uh, open discussions of the, uh, of the situation in the Palestinian territories that I've ever seen. He talks, he talks about it on a real human scale. He talks about it from what, you know, from the people he, telling the stories of the people he meets and, and very well researched too. So this is, this is definitely for anyone who's ever, ever wondering what the whole situation in the Mideast, the, the very crux of it, <coughs> this, this is one, one heck of a book. This, this book will tell you everything you need to know, I think, anyways. Beautifully told, uh, researched, very well researched, and just, uh, uh, oh look, I love his, his big draw, uh, scenes like that. Absolutely stunning. Especially the very, the very last, one of the last scenes in this book. It's he's talking about watching his, uh, the reason that he didn't feel <laughs> too good about it. Is he watching as, uh, as some Israeli soldiers questioned a young Arab boy and made him stand out in the rain while they were checking his, his uh, IDs and all that. And he basically says, you know, how do you think that kid's gonna feel towards it? <clears throat> Not too good. <laughs> Anyways, great book. And um, that's it for this week. Once again, thank you very much. I love each and every one of you. We're almost dug out totally. And uh, life is getting back to normal here in St. John's, Newfoundland. Thanks for all your concerns and everyone's well wishes and stuff like that. Uh, love y'all. And see you sometime later on this week. Oh my God, what's, what is that? Oh, yeah. Take me away. Ah, <laughs> 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 boom, crash, boom.